Now, let's talk about some of the important factors, Neeral, about, uh, you know, uh, what are the factors which are important for determining the success of your EB-5 application? How do we ensure that, you know, we file an application which is, which will, uh, I know it is very difficult to guarantee, but what is it that we put together to ensure that we file a application which has high chances of approval and almost approved? Yeah, like I said, you know, we, we've probably seen everything there is in EB-5, especially yeah. individual applications in terms of with projects. And so every investor goes through two things, the immigration risk and right. the uh, financial risk. Okay. Now, the immigration risk is determined by whether the project is going to create the 10 jobs. All right. And then your source of funds. All right. So that's where we, for us, you and I come in. Because, you know, we have a system where... Before an investor transfers any money to the project, right, we go through their source of funds. Right, we make exactly. sure that their source of funds, all the documentation is verified. It's a tedious back and forth process, right? But we work on this for two to four weeks with investor daily, right. make sure that everything is good. And only when we've determined that okay, we now have everything that the government is going to want to see, then you transfer the funds to the project, and right. then we file the application. Right. So source of fund is the most important thing. Your I-526, your EB-5 petition is approved based on the source of fund. So your source of fund is what is going to get you to the U.S., right? In the first right. place. Right. So why is it so complicated? You know, the source of fund. I mean, if I have got my, uh, you know, returns filed, income tax returns filed, if I've got tax paid money, then it should be easy, right? Yeah. Returning the source of fund. Why, did, why does it, because I've heard from you, I've heard from a lot of other attorneys, and they make it sound very complex. So is it really that complex, the source of fund? It's Can you just give us an example of how exactly it is done? I would say that the uh, it's the path of funds that's right. probably the most complicated. The source right. of funds is easy. Right. If I say that, okay, my $800,000 that, that I'm investing into a project has come from my five years of employment. All right. So I show my tax returns for the last five years. I show I was employed for the last five years. I show pay stubs. That shows that, okay, I made $800,000 that came from employment. Right. But the part of funds from how you got from your employment to your bank account to the project, uh -huh. that's what often can be tricky because you have to show that the money was the, you received salary into your bank statement. Mm -hmm. And then we have to trace the bank statements mm -hmm. so that it accumulates up to $800,000 if you're saying it came from the source. Right. And then we have to show that transfer to the project. Now, a lot of people, you know, me, myself, myself included, I have a lot of transactions in my bank statements. Absolutely. So the government can also ask about any other transaction that they see. Right. So that's where we come in. We right. ask about all these transactions we ask where all these different types of money came from right. because the, that's exactly what the government's looking for to make right. sure that if you're saying that your funds come from source A, that right. it actually comes from source A. Right, right. So source of fund is not complicated. Providing the supporting document and that uh, is complicated. You right. need to know what kind of documents are available, what kind of documents will be accepted, what kind of documents will not be accepted, exactly. what to do. If you don't have a particular document available, what is the alternative? Mm -hmm. And this is where we come in, you know, where this is where we can help you with documentation of source of fund. So two important thing is planning the source of fund. You know, you may have multiple sources of fund, but you may not be able to provide documented support of all the sources. So that's where we sit in. We can look at the multiple sources, see which is the most optimum source, which we can use for which you can provide documentary evidence where there is less cost in terms of transaction costs as well as tax costs and then plan the source of fund and then document it yeah let's come to the second most important factor right job creation mm -hmm. now job creation you need to create a minimum of 10 jobs right but i've seen that you know people generally when i talk to the projects i talk to the lawyers they are not so concerned about the job creation part of it it's like okay job creation will take place you know, it's given. So how, how do you explain that? Why is it that people are not so concerned about job creation when it comes to research and set of projects? I think if you're working with a, a good project um, that has a rich history in EB-5, then right. job creation is very simple. All right. Now, a lot of people think that job creation means you go onto a work site and you're counting 10 people working. Okay. In EB-5, it doesn't work like that. All right. The way it works is the government has a formula. That okay. you show that you're spending X amount of EB-5 dollars right. on EB-5 eligible expenditures. 
right. outshoots a number of jobs. All right. So when you're looking at a project, as long as you're going into a project that's fully financed uh -huh. and it's already under construction, that okay. means that with or without your money, job creation is taking place because they're spending money on the eligible construction right. and the job creation numbers are being um, shut out. Right. All you have to do is that you need to have the money to invest in the project and you need to show how you have got the money. Documentation, once that is done, money is invested, you have selected the right project for investment, which is going to create the jobs. Then your immigration risk is almost taken care of. You don't have to worry about that. You move to US, live, start living your life normally and your lawyer and your project will take care of the job creation. Right, right, so simple as that.